with the global warming and the, that, and a lot of it's a hoax. It's a hoax. The former president has a long history of denying the reality of human-caused climate change. It'll start getting cooler. You just watch. And new research from the University of Colorado shows Trump's stance on the issue probably cost him the 2020 election. That's because two-thirds of voters ranked climate change an important issue, and 77% of them voted for President Biden. Maybe climate change for some voters has become a litmus test issue. The evidence for it is so strong that if they see a candidate denying the issue, then maybe they think, hmm, I wonder if I should trust this candidate in general. Matthew Burgess led the research, crunching numbers from exit poll data and running it through models to calculate roughly 2.4 million voters chose Biden over Trump based on climate change enough to win the Electoral College. I don't have a crystal ball, but I would guess that uh, unless there's a, a different nominee or a significant change in his rhetoric, you would probably see an even stronger effect in 2024 than we saw in 2020. And that's something younger Republicans have been saying for some time. In 2023, I sat down with Benji Backer, the founder of the American Conservation Coalition. The Republican Party has no future as a political party if it doesn't continue to embrace uh, environmental solutions, climate solutions. To young people, this issue is not partisan. It's, it's truly about the planet. And we don't care if you're a Republican, Democrat. We want actions on climate change. The vast majority of young people feel that way. And highlighted by a question in the August GOP debate. How will you calm their fears that the Republican Party doesn't care about climate change? Prompting most candidates to deny the science, echoing the rhetoric of the former president. I didn't raise, I didn't raise a hand. This former Republican congressman and founder of Republic EN says that's a dangerous path for 2024. Climate disputation is hurting the Republican Party generally and specifically hurts Donald Trump because most people have stopped arguing with thermometers, you know. And that's why Inglis remains optimistic, predicting climate action will soon move past polarization into bipartisanship. And that uh, really Donald Trump is an aberration here. He's, you know, Experience is a an effective teacher, often a harsh teacher, but experience is an effective teacher. We're being taught about climate change. Joining us now is NBC national climate reporter Chase Kane. So Chase, how dangerous is the rhetoric that we have heard from politicians, particularly the GOP? And are we expecting to hear that same language that we heard the last presidential cycle again this time? And, and big picture, just to ask you every question possible. Yep. I mean, what should people watching that think and be processing the rhetoric as? I mean, it's not just words, right? It has real impact. Yeah, I mean, I think anytime you have someone denying facts, denying science, that's a dangerous thing. And to be clear, there is broad global scientific consensus on climate change. More than 99% of all peer-reviewed research says this is happening and humans are causing it. So when you have, you know, a former president and a major uh, you know, head of a political party, essentially, like saying that this is a hoax, saying that it's not real, of course that's dangerous. Um, you know, I think all indications are that he's going to continue saying those sort of things until maybe one day he doesn't. But, you know, as we heard in the story, there are Republicans, certainly climate conscious Republicans who say this is hurting us, not just you as a candidate, but this is hurting us as a party to continue denying science. I want to ask you about an article that was in the New York Times today, and this has to do with the Biden administration, where they are reportedly pausing plans to approve one of the largest natural gas terminals. Walk us through that. What is that? What does that mean? And from a political standpoint, for those young voters that tend to vote for Democrats and they're maybe seeing that, what will they make of it? Yeah, so the quick TLDR, if you're not familiar with the backstory, is basically when we take natural gas and liquefy it, super cool it so that we can ship it around the world to Europe, to Asia, uh, there's some preliminary research from Rutgers University, which shows that when we're doing that, when you frack it, when you ship it, when you liquefy it, then ship it again, that it actually has a bigger carbon footprint than coal. So that's really raising some eyebrows, and that's why a lot of environmentalists, a lot of climate activists have started protesting and saying, hey, you can't do this. You can't keep expanding all of these things which are hurting the planet in this way. So there were actually protests planned at the Department of Energy in a couple of weeks to try and get the Biden administration's uh, attention. But this New York Times reporting today says that the president is going to hold off on the approval of this major facility in along the Gulf Coast in western Louisiana and 16 other similar facilities uh, until later this year, until I would imagine after the election when we see how things shake out. But climate activists are saying that at least for now, this is a win. All right. Chase Kane, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.